So now we've laid out some images and some type on the page, but the next step involving type and alignment is going to mark you as a true professional. So in some ways, it's most important. We're going to kern our headline, justify our type, balance our columns, set hyphenation, and remove rivers, widows, orphans, and runs. Trust me, let's go. When it comes to professional layout, the devil is in the details. This document on the left might look like the model on the right, but detailed corrections still need to be made for professional quality work. Let's start by checking for overset text, like the lines hiding at the end of this column. With your selection tool, drag out the frame so we can see all of the text. Our column text is left aligned at the moment with a rag down the right. A rag is that uneven edge on the right side, and there's nothing wrong with that. We could leave it that way and life would be easier, but the text in our example is justified. In other words, aligned both left and right. So let's highlight all of our text and go up to the control panel to click the justify button button for alignment. We'll leave that last line of the paragraph pushed over to the left so it doesn't weirdly stretch across the whole column. Now we can see some of that overset text jumped up at the bottom. We also see some new issues justified text causes, like these white gaps in text which we call rivers. The more narrow our columns are, the more gaps we're going to see. And we have some narrow columns here to challenge you. We also have a lot of hyphens running down the page here, which makes text hard to read. So before we fix them, let's look at all the type and alignment issues that we need to address. Starting with that overset text at the bottom of the column, which throws our alignment off. Sometimes there's a space instead, as there is here, and we'll show you how to fix that either way. For hyphenation, we'll use the hyphenation settings to limit the maximum number of hyphens that can be used in a column. Of course, we'll fix those rivers of white areas as well. And we'll look at the headline, where tracking and kerning are needed for consistent spacing between the letters, as we mentioned in part two of this series. We'll also check for widows and orphans. See that single line at the bottom of the first column that starts the paragraph? It looks pretty lonely. We have an orphan in our document as well. So it's right here, a single line. So we need two lines at the bottom of that column. Similarly, we want to avoid single lines at the top of the columns called widows. These are formed by the last line of a paragraph sitting alone. And by the way, professionals use the terms widows and orphans loosely, so don't get hung up on which is which, but this chart shows the Chicago Manual of Style definitions, since AP Style does not define them per se. Now, let's look at runs, which are the last lines of paragraphs with a word or two. They're just too short. That last line should run about halfway across a column at least. In our document, we do have some runs in those last lines of paragraphs. For example, here and here. Okay, now that we've defined all problems to look for, let's go back and fix them. First, let's look at the headline. A headline looks professional with tight space between the letters. See how much better our model looks with the headline tightly spaced? So to tighten our headline, we're first going to use tracking or letter spacing to tighten those spaces throughout. And then we're going to use kerning to correct any odd spaces between individual letter pairs. And to do all this, we're going to use an easy shortcut instead of using the buttons we used before in the control bar. Let's take a look. First, highlight the text you want to tighten. Next, locate the arrows on your keyboard, which should be in the lower right. And on the left, you'll see the Alt key on PC or the Option key on Mac. So get ready to hold down that Alt or Option key with one hand, and with the other hand, we'll tap the arrow that's pointing to the left. Ready? Okay, hold down Alt or Option key and tap that left arrow. If we tap the right arrow, the tracking gets looser. Wow, that looks much better. 
Now we just have a few individual spots left over that are too tight or too loose. So we're going to kern those letter pairs to change those spaces using the same shortcut we used before, except this time instead of highlighting all your text, just place your cursor between two letters like the R and the S and hold down your Option key or Alt key and this time tap the arrow pointing to the right to loosen space. In fact, we can go through the whole headline and tweak any spaces needed. So click between the first two letters. They look pretty good. The second pair needs a tiny tap tighter to tuck that A under the T. So I'm just advancing my cursor by tapping on the right arrow without holding down any other keys. Then I kern by holding down the Alter Option key and tapping the arrow. And repeat advance and kern as needed. Nice! Next, let's take a look at that pull quote under the headline. We need to increase the space between those lines of type, which you know is called letting or line spacing. So highlight the text, hold down the Option or Alt key, and this time move your up and down arrows to increase or decrease the space. We want the text to meet the guide. This aligns our text here with the bottom of our photo over here. And again, it's good to align points across the page when we can. Okay, palette cleanse. <laughs> you guys ready for a puff? Okay, I'm gonna go do two. There we go, go get them, puppies. Now let's create some hyphenation settings. First, highlight your text. Now we could use the paragraph panel hamburger menu for these procedures or the hamburger menu in the upper right of the entire window, right up here where my cursor is circling. And when we click, we see settings for hyphenation, justification, and other settings that we're going to use. So right now, click on hyphenation. The settings should look something like this. So we're gonna say words with at least five letters can be hyphenated because shorter words look weird. Next, we usually want about three letters before a hyphen minimum, but again, we have very narrow columns. So let's knock this down to two. The next setting could be two or three as well, minimum. Let's look at the overall hyphen limit in a paragraph. A maximum of three hyphen is ideal, and we will deselect all the boxes at the end because we don't want to hyphenate people's names or other proper nouns, and we don't want hyphens across columns or in the last word of a paragraph. So, awesome. Click OK. If you want to remember these settings, there are screenshots in the downloads for this tutorial. So now, with the text still highlighted, go back to the hamburger menu. We're going to automatically control widows and orphans by selecting Keep option. I know that's a weird name, but it means we're going to keep the first two lines and last two lines of a paragraph together so that they don't have those lonely widow and orphan lines at the top or bottoms of columns. So check keep lines together and keep the default two lines and two lines and click OK. Now we're gonna look at justification settings. So keep your text highlighted and stay on that hamburger menu. And this time choose justification so that we can use more settings to close the gaps of potential rivers in the text. These are used only for justified alignment to get rid of those rivers. So let's look at word spacing. Let's use 85%, 100%, and 125%. This means we're limiting the amount of space InDesign can use between words. For letter spacing, we're going to let InDesign squeeze or space out letters more than it usually would. A minimum of 5% and maximum of 5% and hope that it's not too noticeable. 
Next, what is a glyph? It's actually the image of the letters. We're going to let the letters themselves be squeezed to 98% minimum or expand 102% maximum. And again, we'll hope that people don't notice the distortion. Um, if you have wider columns, you probably don't need to distort your letters. You can just set these at 100%, but we are in a challenging situation. So this is what we're setting it for now and click OK. So what about settings for runts, those short lines at the ends of paragraphs? There's actually an InDesign script we could write for those, but it's a little complex, so I'll link to it in the description below. And besides, runts are easy to correct by hand, so we'll just do it that way. So now that we've changed all these settings, let's look at our document. And we see a lot of problems solved and a few to tweak. So we don't have too many hyphens now, just three maximum in a paragraph. We have no widows or orphans any longer. We have no big rivers, maybe some creeks here and there we can fix. But here's the key. We need to start at the top of our document and work to the bottom of it because changes in one line of text will affect the next line of text, like a domino effect. So we can't really backtrack. So we're gonna start at the top. But first, another palette cleanse. Back to the work. Here are some spaces we need to tend to. Basically, we're overwriting our settings at this point just to tweak little things. So we're just going to squeeze the tracking a tiny tap to see if that pulls the words together. Highlight all the text you want to change and use your shortcut. Hold down the Option or Alt key and tap the left arrow key once. Wow, that one tap corrected all this spacing. <laughs> nice. See how little it takes? We do have a slight new problem. Since we can't fit that name onto one line, let's give it a little more space by making the drop cap a little smaller. So highlight that cap and go to your paragraph panel to the drop cap option and knock it down to three instead of four. Perfect. That got the name all in one line. Now we just need to adjust the gap. So highlight the text, hold down the Alter Option key, and tap the right arrow key. And that looks good. This is really the hardest part because this is the narrowest area around that drop cap. Once we get this done, piece of cake. And awesome. And now we'll continue with the other paragraphs. Again, I'm working from top to bottom of the document, and this is very quick using the shortcut once you get used to it. Okay, that looks good. Last but not least, let's check for runs. At the end of each paragraph, are any short lines left over? Here's one. We can correct it by either loosening the tracking of these lines to push more words down onto that last line, or we can tighten the tracking to try to pull that word up into the previous line. Let's see what works best without our text looking weird. So highlight a few lines and let's try tightening. Hold down your Option or Alt key and tap the left arrow key on your keyboard. Wow, that looks good. Eh, not bad. But out of curiosity, let's see what would happen if we had loosened it. So. I'm tapping the right arrow key now, but it spaces out the letters too much to get words down onto the line, so we'll undo that. Nice. And now we see another runt has been created because we shifted the type above that, so let's fix it. We're gonna try it both ways again, tightening and loosening the tracking, and see which one is best. and it appears that loosening looks the best. Nice. 
I don't see any more runts, so this looks good. We also see the last line of our column is perfectly aligned at the bottom with the others. But what if it were too short or too long? What would we do? Well, there are a couple of things we could do. If there were a little overflow, we could edit the text a bit if the client allows for that. But if not, we could just pull the columns up a bit and make the photo a little smaller. And that would give us some space at the bottom. You get the idea. Or what if there's a huge space at the end? You might want to add a photo or a graphic. Another option would be to adjust the letting, the space between the lines. So we would just highlight our text, hold down the Alt or Option key, and tap the up or down arrows. Again, you get the idea of what's possible. And I'm gonna undo this because ours looks good. Whew, I think we've done a pretty good job here. Remember to check all your type one last time from top to bottom. Save and preview our document. Click on this icon at the bottom of your toolbar and select Preview or Presentation. Now we can see it without the guides. Pretty good. Now we just need to export it for the printer or electronic viewing. And that's the next video. Remove rid rem remove rivers, widows, orphans, and runs. Justify our justify our but the next steps with but the next steps I'm going to mark you as a true professional. Shit, I'm looking at the wrong direction.